Good afternoon. Welcome to South Monterey County. My name is Anna Velasquez and I'm the mayor of the city of Soledad and also the first female mayor in 99 years since, since the city's incorporation in 1921. It is my absolute honor to welcome you to South Monterey County, nestled between the Santa Lucia and the Gavilla Mountain Range um, to our left with majestic views of the Pinnacles National Park designated as a national park by legislation authored by our former Congressman Sam Farr in 2012 and signed by President Obama in 2013. Thank you, Congressman Farr. Let's give him a big round of applause. I would also like to take a moment to thank Russell Joyce of Joyce Winery, Natalie and all that staff that's here with us today for so graciously um, hosting today's event out in beautiful Southern, out in beautiful South Monterey County in Soledad. Thank you. Thank you. As we gather today to celebrate the unity and strength of our Democratic Party, we take a moment to thank and honor the many champions who are with us today. Many who were the first in their elected positions and helped pave the way for many of us. We thank you. I know Congressman Zoe Lofgren is scheduled to be here, not here yet, but we thank you, Congresswoman Zoe Lofgren. We thank you, Senator Ana Caballero. And we thank you, Comptroller Betty Yee. Although many glass ceilings have been shattered, there is much more work to be done to rebuild and unite our party, our country, our state, our counties and our communities. We must never stand in silence while others threaten to destroy our democratic values that so many died for. Today, surrounded by the fertile soil of the Salinas Valley, we pledge to unite as Democrats and continue to lead with integrity, honesty, and compassion in order to continue the fight for justice and equality for all. Let us never forget that this land was made for you and me. Esta tierra es para ti y para mí. Now it is my honor to introduce Karen Araujo, Chair of the Monterey County Democratic Central Committee and tireless public servant and inspiration and role model for civic engagement. She has been recognized as an effective community advocate by many local electeds and has received numerous awards for her leadership. At the local level, she has served as vice chair and vice chair of the Democratic Central Committee and development officer as well, club member of the Democratic Women for Monterey County and Progressive Democrats of America, Monterey Area Chapter. Karen Araujo is a lifelong Monterey County resident. Her family has resided in what is known in Monterey County for five generations. She has always lived in Salinas, grew up in Alisal and Roosevelt Street, Central Committee Officer since July 2016, and she brings many firsts to the roles of Chair of the Monterey County Democratic Party. She has 16 years as Committee Organizer and Administrative Coordinator for the Monterey Bay Central Labor Council. She has 15 years of member and Vice President, as a member and Vice President of the Unite Here Local 483 and Hotel Workers Union. She's a co-author of Voices of Change, A People's Oral History with Gary Carnes and the late Juan Martinez. She is co-director and curator of the Juan D. Martinez Cultural and Historical Collection for, public ben for Public's Benefit. Karen has a passion for interfaith organizing and coalition building, working for social transformation and justice in the community by telling our stories and finding common ground between people of different viewpoints and fills Karen's work time, volunteer efforts, and personal time and heart. Now please join me in welcoming Karen Araujo. to Mayor Ana Velasquez for securing this wonderful venue for this fabulous event. Thank you, Ana. To augment the powerful and beautiful words Ana offered about this lovely fertile valley, we take a moment to name those who have lived here for generations 
the First Nations of this land, the Ohlone, the Rumson, the Salinan, the Mutsun, and many, many others on, near, and around here. We respect them through our actions, our words, and with this respectful moment of silence. May we be worthy of carrying on. Thank you so much for being here. Welcome to Democrats United. Thank you to all of you helping to advance our shared Democratic Party values. Thank you especially to the planning committee for putting this together, led by Chris Walton, Sue McSorley, and Amit Pandya. Many others helped. You can see your program for their names, but I do want to point them out. We do recognize all of the elected officials from around the region who have showed up here today. Thank you so much, Central Committee members. Those of you running for office, thank you so much. Those of you who vote your values through the Democratic Party and support through your dollars. So thank you so much for being here today. You will hear specific names. Um, from the wonderful speakers we have. A round of applause for all of the wonderful Democrats here today. You'll see over here a few signs. Those are our, are our currently endorsed candidates for the November race. We have Glenn Church and Regina Gage. We have Flip District 2 in Monterey County. A Democrat will sit in that seat. Also, you will see Tina Nieto for sheriff there. She remains our endorsed candidate going into November, and there is room for considering and endorsing in all other races. So check out our website next week uh, for details on that. I want to introduce to you someone that uh, is very familiar to you, but I'm going to introduce him anyway because you'll learn something new about him. And he, and he will lead us through a successful program that will be well-timed, People have so much to say, but we're going to remind them of the wonderful agreements on time. Sue, can you raise your hand there? Look at the beautiful Sue McSorley. Vanna, Vanna White has nothing on her. Woo! Speakers, please look to her periodically. She will help you along. The good news is, after this is done, we'll have another hour of hanging out and socializing so you can continue to hear stories and share with one another. But Sue's going to help you wrap things up. And to move things along, is going to be John Laird. And I'm going to tell you, John Laird was elected to State Senate District 17, November 3rd of 2020. And he carried all four counties in that district, and the, the margin was over 145,000 votes. It was a very sound victory. And in the state, uh, in the state Senate, he chairs many, many uh, committees, but he is the chair, I mean, he is a member of many committees, and he chairs the all-important budget subcommittee on education. We're grateful for that. And he's a vice chair of the Joint Legislative Audit Committee, as well as many other individual committees and the Joint Legislative Committee on Rules, as well as the Joint Legislative Committee on Budget. He is a busy man, if you did not know that. And from uh, 2009 to 2011, of course, you know that he served under Governor Brown as Secretary for the California Natural Resources Agency. And uh, when he was in assembly, he he ran until he couldn't run anymore, and he was so effective when he was there that 82 bills authored by John were signed into law. 82 laws. That is wonderful. And of note, uh, for those of you uh, who may not be aware of this, he served nine years at Santa Cruz on the city council and was a mayor twice. That made him one of the first openly gay mayors in the whole United States of America. A trailblazer, a trailblazer. John, you, you may have known uh, from his work as executive director with the Santa Cruz, Age, uh, Santa Cruz Age, Age, AIDS Project or that he taught environmental policy at UC Santa Cruz. He is a son of teachers. It's in his bones. He was raised in Vallejo, but this has been his home ever since he uh, graduated with honors from UCSC in 72. He's a longtime resident here. And of course, he, has, he and his wonderful spouse, John Flores. And of course, we have to say he's a lifelong Chicago Cubs fan. My fellow Democrats, your MC and host for the day, Senator John Laird. Thank you. If you're a county supervisor, would you raise your hand? 
we have, we have Wendy Rude ask you. Any others? If you're a mayor of a city, uh, could you identify yourselves? Yeah, we have Seaside, we have Carmel, we have Delray Oaks. Uh, uh, we, we already have heard of our host from here in Soledad. I think there was one, uh, and I know there's an aspiring one here, uh, a couple. There are city council members here. Yes, and who are the city council members? Right? Uh, well, yeah, the mayor of Carmel is here, and he has a four-person fan club right around him <laughs> that wants to make sure we know. So Dave Potter is here as mayor of Carmel. And city council members, who is a city council member that is here? Uh, there's Dan Albert. Uh, there's Jeff Barron. I know Tyler's here somewhere. Orlando! And your name is? Orlando Osorio Salinas. Salinas City Council member right here. Nelly. Any, uh, Orlando! Alejandro! Greenfield! Okay, Delray Oaks. Greenfield. Greenfield. Any others that we didn't... Alejandro Chavez. Okay. Now, if you're on a college board or a school board, there's Hart now. Santa Rita. Greenfield. Greenfield, and which one? Santa Rita. Santa, Santa Rita Salinas. Um, there's MPC, and I recognize the county school board, and I know we have Pacific Grove, and I know we have um, uh, Monterey. Any other school board members? Okay, Monterey. I mentioned Monterey, but we, there we are. There's the actual school board member. And any other elected officials for some category that we didn't include? Yes, sir. Water board. Water board. Yeah, water board. And there's two water boards. There's another one there. Bless you. Uh, you'll be going to work today. Uh, um, so I just wanted to acknowledge that we had many, many elected officials here, and it's a tribute to the unity of this event. And so what I'm going to do is um, go to the first auction item and just remind you that if you bid and you're successful this goes to the monterey central committee this goes to the united campaign this goes to reaching out to voters for some of the very people that just waved and uh, uh, it is very important if you if you just have enough please stretch if you want to pull with somebody do it if you want to bid against your spouse for high class entertainment we are all here for that so the very first uh, auction item before we get to our ver very first speaker is a custom coffee table or two end tables of your own design, handmade by Brandon Naylor of Onyx Otter Industries. And, and Brandon, I know you're here somewhere. Here he is, right here. And you set it up. Okay. Okay, so he's going to do a, a custom coffee table or two end tables of your own design. The fair market value is eight hundred to a thousand dollars. Eight hundred to a thousand dollars, except for he's donating that, and the bid goes to the Democratic Central Committee. So, do I have somebody that would like to open at a hundred dollars? I have a two hundred to three hundred, four hundred. She's not even sheriff, and she's drawing on the salary. Oh, wow. Have a bid of 400. Does somebody want to bid 500? Have a bid 500 right there. Do I have 600? 600. Do I have 700? You guys can consult and switch. I have a bid of 600 right here. Anybody at 700? This is 800 to 1,000 dollar value. Goes to the central committee. I have a bid of 600, and your bid now is. We were up to 600. Do you want? But that was you. Do you want to bid 700 now? No, no, no. <laughs> okay. Well, I was being hopeful. Okay. We have a bid of 600. Anybody wish to go to 700? We have a bid of 700 right there. Would you like to go to 800? I have a bid of 800. Would you like to go to 900? All right. Bid of 800. Bid of 800. 
There's a 900 bid. I have a bid of 900. Would you like to go to 1,000? Well, or would you like to go to 1,000? Uh, I have a bid of 900. Do you want to up it to 1,000? I have a bid of 900. 900 going once. Wait a minute. What is it you're auctioning? The table that's right in front of you that we described and showed. Bid of 900. Going once. Going twice. Is that a bid? Is this a bid? No, we're, this isn't an this isn't an open mic. We're bidding. We're doing uh, five other things, but this is the only table. Do you want to bid it? Okay, I have a bid of nine hundred. This reminds me of the Santa Cruz City Council. Um, nine hundred going once. Nine hundred going twice. Sold for $900. Thank you very much and congratulations. <clears throat> and we're going to move to our first speaker. And we have a statewide elected official who happens to be the vice chair of the California Democratic Party. And here to introduce her is our state senator, Ana Caballero, who... It's been my pleasure to serve with and who I appreciate more every day. If you could see her in Sacramento, you could see that she speaks up for people that are not in urban areas, that might not be the most advantaged. She makes sure they get the benefit of every program. She makes sure their voice is heard. So please welcome Senator Ana Caballero. Thank you very much, John. Um, Welcome and hello, Democrats! So let me just say that I'm uh, really excited that this is, um, this is happening in South County. I want to welcome all of you who have never been to South County, introduce you uh, to a, one of the finer things that South County has to offer, which is their in incredible um, wine uh, tour and wine area. Um, you know, we're known for lettuce and for strawberries and all that kind of good stuff, but we, we produce some pretty good wine as well. I also, I want to make sure that I thank Chris Walton because Chris has done a yeoman's job of bringing Democrats together. So I, I don't see her out there, but make sure to, there she is, make sure to give her a hug and to say thank you so much because um, she's really been inclusive and that really is a subject of my, my discussion. But be, before I move on, I, what I want to do is, I want to thank you also to the Central Committee for, for coordinating today's Unity event. Um, this strengthens our Democratic Party and this is probably, I know we say this every year, but this is probably the most important important election in uh, the history of our country. This really is an important election. And so as, as Democrats, we're going to have to get our proverbial you-know-what together. So what I'd like to do is introduce you to what I call the Salinas Valley Power Table, um, which is um, uh, the table that, that I uh, sponsored here today. Um, includes myself, obviously. Um, Erica Padilla Chavez, who's a Hartnell Community College trustee. Erica, if you could wave your, your hand. Nelly Martinez, I just saw her walk in. Nelly Martinez is on the Greenfield City Council. Ana Velasquez, who you had an opportunity to hear from. She's the mayor of the city of Soledad. She's doing a fantastic job. Carla Gonzalez, who's a city council member for the city of Salinas. And our honorary um, uh, honorary Salinas Valley Power person is Tina Nieto, who's the chief of police in Marina, who is doing all of that bidding, and who we hope is going to end up being the sheriff for the county of Monterey. Let me just say that she would, I, I, I venture to guess she'd be the first Latina and probably the first female sheriff as well, and so we're real excited to have her as, as part of our, our table. So I have to be real brief, so let me just tell you that um, in California, Democrats are in charge. And it is possible, and that's a good thing, right? Because yeah. we have priorities that we want to make sure that we focus on. We will probably take away 
some seats from the Republicans, both in the Assembly and in the Senate. And we have more than two-thirds Democrats in, 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 in those two uh, houses. Um, and we control all the, the constitutional officers as well as the, as the governor. So the real challenge we face now is um, that we have to focus on social justice um, and also, well, we have to join the social justice movement with the environmental movement, with the farming movement, with every movement that is important here in California, whether it's supporting housing and healthcare and education. We have a diverse electorate. And the, the challenge we see, we, we face, is that every part of the electric electric wants a seat at the table. And so we have to be willing to listen. We have to be willing to uh, make them part of the discussion. We have to make, make sure that unapologetically we say we have a big tent and we mean it. And so I'm here today because this is our challenge for the future is to make sure everybody is included, that everybody has an opportunity to feel like they're important, and that we're taking on all of the big issues that our country is facing. Um, California is a leader. We need your help this election. Please, please help us get out the vote. Um, it's going to be critically important. So thank you very much for being here today. So now it is my privilege to introduce, really, a woman who needs no introduction, who I consider a dear friend, but also a solid Democratic colleague. Um, this individual is familiar to you all because you've seen her repeatedly in Monterey County, and that's um, Controller Betty Yee. So, um, you know, that when, when, when Betty, she is, Betty is, as the controller is the chief financial officer of the state. And that is really important, not only because she signs all the checks, uh, but also because it's really important that we have someone who's tough, who is fair, who operates with integrity, that you know you can trust, that she insists on transparency in government and holds everybody, whether it's a private industry uh, that pay their taxes or should pay their taxes, uh, accountable. She served on the Board of Equalization and she is a candidate for, for treasurer in a couple years. Um, but more importantly, it's my hope that she runs for governor um, soon and that we have an opportunity to, to support her in the way that she supported us. What you will remember from Betty Yee is that whenever there's a, a, an event like this in Monterey County, she's here. And I've gone to events all over the state and she is everywhere and she puts her money where her mouth is. She will bid for things, she'll put up lunches, um, she's always here for us. And so it gives me a, a great deal of pleasure to bring up to the mic my good friend, Betty Yee. Thank you so much, Senator Caballero. Good afternoon, Democrats. And good afternoon, Monterey County Democrats. And you know what I love about this? And thank you to Mayor Velasquez. We're not talking about North County Democrats, Central County Democrats, South County Democrats. Good afternoon, Monterey Democrats. So first, let me just say um, how wonderful it is that you have terrific representation in Sacramento. And you have fearless leaders and Senators John Laird and Ana Calviero, but also Assemblymember Robert Rivas and so many who are just in Sacramento to fight the fights that we know need to be, we need to champion. And I want to thank all of the activists who are here, to Karen Naranjo, the leadership of the Central Committee, because we know that this election, and I want to just prepare all of you, when Zoe Lofgren comes and joins us this afternoon, let's give her a warm Monterey County welcome. She has been stellar, stellar in fighting for our democratic institutions, and that is what this election is about. And I want to first, uh, before I go on, really acknowledge my political mentor right here from Monterey County, uh, the Honorable Sam Farr, who got me started in this whole uh, political elective uh, journey, and has been continues to be a mentor of mine. But, but here's but here's what's at stake. We all know what's at stake. But let's be sure we cast that vote for Prop One, so that California can lead the way in making sure that we are preserving the right and the freedom to abortion and contraception. <laughs> And let's also be sure that we turn out the vote for every single race up and down the ticket. As your vice chair of the California Democratic Party, we know the importance of down-ballot races. Look, let's face it, 
all of our statewide electives who are Democrats are going to win this election. But it's the down ballot races that really matter in terms of how we engage our voters, that we care about the everyday Californians in our communities, and how we also build the bench of Democrats to ascend into higher leadership and to higher office. And when we are able to turn out that vote, Democrats will win. Democrats will win. And this is what this election is about. But it's also about the fact that here in California, too, the right to vote and voting itself is under attack. We have our own version of just uh, voter suppression, and it's called misinformation and disinformation. And that's why the work that we do together in unity as Democrats is so important. When we talk about the issues, when we talk about our candidates, when we are there engaging person to person, peer to peer with our Democratic community, we will win. And not only will we win, we will have the right leadership to be leading our communities and this state and this country to be sure that everyone has the opportunity to belong and to really pursue the opportunities that we put before them. So I'm thrilled to be here. This is, uh, I, I've been here many times and I feel like this is a second home. But to all of you here and to um, Senator Caballero, I will just say um, the road to governor may not be all that far for me in the future. So. <laughs> But really, with all of your help, I have had the tremendous honor of serving as your state controller. We are the fifth largest economy in the world. We've not had to do any borrowing to pay the bills for the state of California. Our pension funds are healthy so that we can reward our retirees and the public educators uh, for the great work that they do through a lot of sacrifice during their careers. And again, just thank you to all of you for continuing to just keep up the great activism. This is not the August law that we're so used to before the Labor Day push. We are pushing throughout the remainder of this year to be sure that we get all our Democrats elected. Let's get to work. Thank you all very much. Let's hear it for our state controller, Betty Yee. <clears throat> now before we bring up the next speaker, we have another auction item. And hopefully you're all getting ready. Because uh, it's an Elkhorn Slough sailing for four with John Heil, a unique opportunity for four to sail on a sailboat in the shallow tidal waters of Elkhorn Slough. You can see and enjoy the aquatic wildlife as you ride the tide along the estuary. There's light snacks and refreshments served. The value is $500. Who would like to open the bidding for the trip on Elkhorn Slough at $100? Who would, right here, I have $100. Who'd like to go to $200? Uh, uh, I have $300. Did somebody want to go to $400 of the hands that were up? Uh, the, uh, ah, <clears throat> uh, the sheriff still has her, her money, or the sheriff's candidate. So I have a bid of $400. Does somebody want to go to $500? $500 for Elkhorn Slough, tour of four. We have a bit of 400. There's 500 right back there from Delray Oaks. Uh, uh, 500. Who would like to go to 600? We have a bit of 500. Who would like to go to 600? 600 right here. Would you like to go to 700? I have a bit of 600. Would you like to go to 700? You can split this. There's four. You can go two and two with people. Oh, way in the back. That's 700, right? I have a bit of 700. Would somebody like to go 800? I have a bit of 700. Pris, you shouldn't be waving to people right now. I have a bit of 700. Does anybody want to go to 800? Bit of 700. Going once. Going twice. Sold to the clapping person in the back for 700. Thank you very much. <clears throat> and next, uh, I am going to introduce the state assembly member that represents this district, but I'm going to do a little of also what he's going to do, is we had two people that were very significant that could not be here today. Uh, our, our congressman, Jimmy Panetta, could not be here today. He's tied up out of state on business, and I know Susie Brusa is here representing him over here. So if you have a question, she's here, but uh, Jimmy's on the ballot this year in parts of Monterey County, and, and we're very grateful. Um, and then also, Mark Stone can't be here today, and Mark will be leaving the assembly in December. And I, I just want to say, before I introduce our next speaker, who I think will have some comments uh, himself, is that he has just been 
a leader on so many issues. He's really delivered because uh, uh, he's chaired the Judiciary Committee and whether it's consumer protection, he's worked in health services, he delivered some money for housing significantly locally in this budget, and he's just been a very able warrior for 10 years and really represented uh, uh, this area well. And uh, I've known him since he was a school board member and a county supervisor and a coastal commissioner. He has a long history of public service. And the next time each one of you see him, you should thank him for that because as all the elected officials that identified themselves know, it occasionally can be thankless, and uh, he has really stepped up over multiple decades. So here to talk about more uh, about Mark Stone and introduce somebody is the assembly member from this district who is a bright rising star and who we love for what he delivers here and his own story for moving from a family that was farm workers to one of the highest leadership uh, positions potentially in California and, and is from a rural area where that doesn't happen. So please welcome our assembly member from here, Robert Rivas. Well, it's great to see everybody and, and uh, really thankful for the opportunity to be here, but, but, but very thankful for the opportunity to serve and, and, and represent this beautiful region that's been my home my entire life, home of my family. But uh, incredibly fortunate to have had the opportunity throughout my career to work for some incredible, incredible um, uh, some people. Uh, Simone Salinas, Ana Caballero, to have the opportunity to work with someone like John Laird, who I've known for, for um, some 20 years. I met John, I, I tell the story often, when I was in, uh, a college student in Sacramento. I was in the elevator, I was a student intern at the Capitol, and I met this, this guy in uh, the elevator who happened to be uh, an assembly member from Santa Cruz. And ever since then, we've been friends. Uh, and so having the opportunity now to work with John Laird um, is, you know, uh, certainly been very special. And, and what I've learned both working with John, uh, but also working with, with Bill Monning, who has been here, and I had the opportunity to work with Bill for two years, um, who, who certainly uh, is someone I consider to be a, you know, a mentor to me. But to have the opportunity to work with John Laird, Bill Monning, and Mark Stone, uh, has helped me uh, realize, uh, and uh, Ana Caballero has helped me realize how lucky we are as a region to have such good representation here on the Central Coast, not to mention uh, 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 a Jimmy Panetta, the Sam Farr, and what we anticipate, what we know will be Zoe Lofgren in the Salinas Valley. Uh, I'm excited for Zoe to be here, who certainly is uh, a leader in, 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 in her own right, and excited to, to, you know, to, to, to have rep, um, representing us in uh, Congress. Uh, but I wanted, I've been asked this afternoon uh, to say um, some words about Mark Stone. And, you know, unfortunately Mark couldn't be here. Uh, but I can't uh, express, uh, you know, enough my, my gratitude uh, to um, uh, Mark Stone. And as John highlighted, throughout his career he's advocated, uh, always advocated for our most vulnerable residents here along the Central Coast. Uh, he's always advocated uh, for those issues most important here in our region. Uh, and during his time in uh, the Assembly, uh, he's authored and passed legislation that, uh, um, that has defended our environment, has protected LGBTQ um, um, rights in our communities, uh, and has done all he could to enhance uh, our consumer protections. Uh, and I can tell you, uh, and I wish Mark um, was here, uh, but, but you know, I, I, I have to say the work that we do in the California legislature it's not easy at times. You know, we work in a very fast-paced and a very uh, uh, a dynamic environment where relationships matter, relationships are important, uh, and, um, but with these relationships that are built on, on trust and integrity, uh, at times they seem to be far and few between. Uh, and so I learned very quickly in my time in the assembly, this is now my fourth year, uh, that I can't control what others do, but I certainly can control what I do. Uh, and if I could set an example for others, then great. Uh, but, you know, when it comes to setting a good example, you know, uh, as I mentioned, this is now my fourth year. It was really my first year. The one example that, that, that I like to share was, uh, you know, I had a very important bill I was authoring, farm worker housing bill, important to this region, important to me personally, because I grew up in farm worker housing. And uh, it, in the bill, there was a CEQA exemption, exempted CEQA for the types of, of, of agricultural housing we needed. So Mark Stone called me and said, hey, Rob, I can't support this bill because it exempts CEQA. I've never voted against a CEQA exemption. So I said, Mark, I really appreciate you letting me know. 
I, no worries, we're going to have the support, but we're all good. Uh, and so, uh, you know, to give you an idea, when you introduce a bill and you're, 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 you, you speak on it on the floor, it's chaotic, right? At times, nobody's listening. And um, all I can remember is when we got that final bill through, on that final vote, I looked up on the screen and it said Mark Stone had voted for our bill. So I was kind of shocked. And so a couple days later, uh, I called Mark and said, hey, uh, I saw that you voted for the bill. You didn't have to. And Mark told me that he voted for our bill because it was important to me. And that meant the world to me as a freshman assembly member. Because at times when you're introducing these bills and everyone's talking, nobody's listening, you feel invisible. And I knew that Mar I wasn't invisible for Mark, that he listens, he pays attention. Uh, and it meant the world to me. And for me, it showed that he cares. He, pay he, he takes his job very seriously. And with that, we've been very lucky to have him as our representative. We've been very lucky. He's, he's a man of high integrity. I'm thankful for him. I'm going to miss him. And thankful because he, certainly through his example, he has made me a better legislator uh, moving forward. Uh, and But with that, uh, like John said, if you see Mark, thank him for his service. Um, he was an incredible representative, uh, a man of high integrity. Uh, and with that, I wanted to introduce and welcome uh, our future colleague, uh, someone uh, speaking of integrity, uh, someone with, with high moral character, is Don Addis. Uh, and, and Don Addis, I'm very excited to have the opportunity to work with her in the coming years. She is an educator, a teacher, an educational uh, program developer, and she's a Morrow Bay City Council member. And she has uh, ensured that um, you know her life, her commitment, uh, has been to students and preparing the next generation for success. Uh, and so, Don, I'm so excited to have the opportunity to 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 work with you moving forward, um, and, 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 and and focusing on issues not just for here for our Central Coast residents, but for residents all across our state. And so, with that, please give me a warm Monterey County welcome to Don Addis. Thank you, Rob. Get set up here. How's everyone doing? Yeah, you're happy to be here drinking wine. Thank you to Joyce Winery. Let's hear a round of applause for Joyce Winery. What a lineup. It's a true honor to be part of this uh, lineup today. And I won't take too much of your time, but I'm Dawn Addis. I am your endorsed candidate for State Assembly District 30. So thank you. Uh, the new Assembly District, people have been asking, where is this new Assembly District? It's coastal Monterey, part of coastal Santa Cruz, and almost all of San Luis Obispo County. So uh, there's my campaign manager. Andrea Hamelek, she can wave. Please introduce yourself to her. We drove up uh, from Monterey. We're incredibly excited to be here. And we're honored to have come through the June primary with you at our side. We wouldn't be here without you. So, um, And it was a tough race. It was a tough primary. And now we're going into the general election as a unified force. It's a force that's going to keep Monterey blue. But what you might not be used to is it's also going to flip a seat in the southern part of the district. So are you ready to flip a seat from red to blue, Monterey? Yeah. So I do want to say uh, thank you to Mark Stone, as Assembly Member Mark, uh, Rob Rivas did, and also to thank Assembly Member Rob Rivas, State Senator John Laird, Congressman Sam Farr, who are all early supporters of mine and really uh, stepped up for me. And their continued leadership and service for you is critically important. I want to thank each of the leaders that are here today, because this is what leading from the grassroots looks like. There's a lot of star power here, but we all started somewhere. We all started standing where you're standing, wanting to make change in the world. So please give a round of applause for every elected out here today. Most of all, though, I want to say thank you to each of you. You've shown up, you've spoken up, you're voting, and you're supporting candidates like me. And today I am here because I want to be a champion for you. I'm a mom first, I'm a special education teacher second, I'm a local council member third, but always I am a public service who is here for the good fight. And I need you with me for that fight. I am here because we need a California where our belief that housing is a human right becomes our reality. 
We need our schools not just to recognize that ability is universal, but that creates universal opportunity. We need our ingenuity to create the climate solutions that have to be in front of us for today. And we need to create a healthcare system where each person has the quality care they need, including abortion care for folks in states that just lost that care. So as I've spoken to people across Monterey, I know that you need representatives who are going to work for these issues, but you also need representatives who are going to see you as human beings that are going to work for each of you. And I'll tell you a little bit about my story. I was raised by a single mom. In the early dark of the morning, I would hear her leave the house. I would watch her come back late in the evening after spending 10, 12 hours on her feet, always putting others before herself as a nurse, when she would then come home and put me before her, always putting service before self. And that's really why I'm here with you today, because I grew up with the values of putting others before self, the values of knowing that while our challenges are great, together it's our heart for service that's going to help us solve them. So I'm excited to have come through the June primary with you by my side, and I look forward to working with you into November and beyond. And I hope you'll be with me. Will you be with me, Monterey? <laughs> So in closing, I just want to say this. You know this, but I need you to hear me say it. That Monterey is California's jewel. We have the world's most spectacular coastline, California's most verdant food sources, the nation's most important social justice work. And I look forward to being one of the very best electeds that you go to the ballots in November and vote for. I hope that you have and you know that you'll not have just one or two or three representatives at the state legislator, legislature, but four of us that are going to join together to be your voice, to be your representatives, and to be your advocates so that you know that we will together protect and amplify the things that grow across this county, that make this county great, that make this state great, and ultimately make us the best nation in the world. So thank you so much, Monterey. And just one brief reason why her election is so important, and that is, is we just heard from Robert Rivas, and when you have a partner on the Senate side and the Assembly side, you get more done. So Robert Rivas and I just produced $25 million to save the Watsonville Hospital because we are both working across. And last year, Mark Stone and I partnered to provide a big slug of money for homelessness in the north part of the district because the money comes on a per capita basis, but the population is much bigger. And just now, in San Luis Obispo County, I had to do it all myself. The current Republican representative doesn't get a dime in the budget. So I had to get the veterans hall in Cayuco, so the road project in Paso Robles, and the ag programs at Cal Poly, and do it all myself. And then Next year, Dawn will be a partner in making sure that we make that effort spread much further. So you might not see the partnerships, but that's what she represents, is partnerships with all of us in doing that. And, and Ana Caballero produces in the same way. So that is what it is really important for us to do. Now, we have uh, another auction item. Um, we have two flights over Monterey Bay with John Wizard and view the wonders of Monterey Bay from high in the sky, two 90-minute flights over Monterey Bay with your pilot, John Wizard, scheduled at your convenience. The value is $500 each flight. I think we'll, we'll try to do one bid for two flights, but if people keep bidding, we might divide it up and, and do a flight each. So who would open the bidding, value $500 for two flights over the Monterey Bay? And how much, 100? I have a bit of a hundred. Who wants to go two hundred? Who wants to go two hundred? Is that three? 
200 right here. Who wants to go to 300? I have 300 right there. Who wants to go to 400? I have 400 right here from Sam Farr. Uh, apparently, congressional retirement pays well. So, so, so we have a 400 bid from Sam Farr. Who has 500? Who would want to bid 500? I have a bid of 400. Well, we, uh, Sam, if, if we got somebody to bid 300 or 400 along with you, would you split it? You take one flight, them take the other? Yeah. Who, uh, we have a bid of 400 for one flight. Somebody bid 300 for the other. Okay, 300 for the other. Does somebody want to outbid the 300 for the other flight and go to 400? <laughs> Then I have 300 and 400. Anybody want to outbid either of those bids? Then going once, going twice, 400 and 300. Thank you. You each get a flight uh, from John Wizard. And just in time, we, we have had one of our major guests arrive. Uh, Congresswoman Zoe Lofgren is here. <clears throat> and Sam, are you ready to come up here and introduce Congresswoman Zo uh, Zoe Lofgren? And then after that, we have three more items. We have Bill Monning, and we have your very important private conversations. So we will be getting to that. Sam Farr, and Sam Farr needs no introduction. He was in elected office from 1975 to just a few years ago and really delivered for all parts of the Central Coast. So please welcome former Congress member Sam Farr. Wow, what a great event. This was my dream. Um, recently, I did a, um, a look at the Monterey County. I used to be the local government chair in the state assembly, and I want to know how many local government school districts, water district, park districts we had. And then I looked at the uh, num number of elected officials. And what is keen is that we have 399, including 18 judges, that are on the ballot. 399 people. And the point of this is, if you think about elections, those are all in Monterey County. That's all politics is local. And everybody in Washington talks about everything we do because we represent districts, right? There's nobody from Washington. And they sort of blame the big Congress or the White House. Hell, those are all local people that have elected those representatives. They're from local areas. Well, in this reapportionment, so what I want to do with Monterey County, before I introduce so, is just tell you that if 399 people on the ballot Ballot, and only 97 of those are Republicans. So Monterey County Democrats are taking over water districts, school districts, city councils, and you got to continue. We got to make this totally a really great progressive county. Why? Because California was born here. The ideas of the great state of California all came out of, of, of Monterey County. Salina, this county is still the largest ag producer in the world. No other, no other county in the world produces 100 commercial crops. We do. And so, and our coastline is, you know, we just put it on a stamp with the National Monument. So, it's really an important county. It's not just another county of 58 counties. But the people who know how to run well in the state legislature and in Congress are people who've had a local elected office experience where you learn the territory, you learn everything that's in your responsibility. And when I was in the assembly, this woman from Santa Clara came up who knew more about social services and welfare than anybody in the state assembly. Her name was Zoe Lofgren. And I just remember sitting in the speaker's office and listening to her. I was chair of the local government committee and saying, wow, because I was a county supervisor. How did she learn all this stuff about how all the delivery mechanisms are there? And I get elected to Congress. And a year later, two years later, Zoe Lofgren gets elected. I was chair of the, by my peers in Congress in California, elected to be the chair of the California delegation, which was about almost even split of Democrats, Republicans. And after me, because I said, well, there's a, you know, I'm on the appropriations committee. I've got great work to do. I was, let's chair this thing. So I said, who should we pass it to? And that was about when, 2001, 2002, uh, right after the reapportionment, 2003. And I said, well, let's pass it to Zoe Lofgren. 
She's been such a great chair of the Democratic delegation of California. She's still the chair. And she's chair of the Judiciary Committee, subcommittee on immigrants on immigration. So all these immigration battles that we're we the answers to immigration she has and has done and has drafted and trying to get Republicans to support them. She says that we all know, and I think half the people who are here so to thank you for being on the January 6th uh, committee. Um, <laughs> You're a su you really are a superstar, and although a lot of people didn't know you in this district, they cer certainly know you now. And she's also chair of the House Administrations Committee. She's got so many titles and so many responsibilities, and why? Because she's good at it. And all the speakers that have been up here talking about how we're going to have all these majorities, which is great, but it doesn't mean a damn thing if you can't get the job done. And that's the issue in Washington, the job done. We could pass today Abortion, federal national standards for abortion. All we we can pass it. All we need is the votes in the Senate. We can pass gun control. All we need is the votes. And the list goes on and on. It's all doable. And both houses are Democrats. And so it's just a tragedy that we can't deliver. But I'll tell you, one of the most progressive members on building the foundation in every aspect of law is O'Loughlin. And I am so proud. I was sort of looking at this district because Zoe's been such an urban person and looking at all this Salinas Valley. But Zoe, this is it. Look around. There's a billions and billions of dollars worth of agriculture out here. All of these people come from historical families in the valley. It's a great Hispanic valley long before the Anglos ever arrived. It's where agriculture was born. And we welcome you with Incredible. You wait till you see this applause you're going to get. Because we don't know you all that well, but we already love you. Thank you, Sam. And, uh... <laughs> oh, it's okay. <laughs> thank you, Sam. And thank you, John, for moving the program around. I had an education in beach... Uh, beach traffic this uh, today, and um, so I'm sorry I'm a little bit late. Um, but it's it is wonderful uh, to have the chance to. I hope if the voters will agree, let me represent a Monterey County in the United States House of Representatives. You know, I'll be honest. When the Independent Redistricting Commission, they didn't care what the, you know the elected officials said, and that's the way it's supposed to work. But as we were watching, Panetta and I said, they're doing what? And it's kind of an odd uh, configuration. Silicon Valley and the ag areas to the south of Santa Clara County. And of course, Jimmy Panetta has ghosts now from all the way from Cambria to Evergreen in San Jose. That's kind of odd. But we, you know, it's what they did. And so I'm helping Jimmy and he's helping me and my friend Sam Farr is helping me. And I decided to come down as often as I could to Monterey County, we've also got Watsonville, San Benito County, and listen to people to, to try and become better uh, schooled in the issues that uh, drive the economy of this region. Obviously, technology drives the economy up in Santa Clara County, ag drives the economy down here, and I've learned so, so much. And people have been so wonderful and so warm in helping me, the elected officials and the like. I just, I'm grateful uh, to the people who live here. You know, I, um, just a minute uh, about myself, I grew up actually in uh, Santa Clara County. My dad was a beer truck driver. My mother was a cook in a school cafeteria. I went to public schools and I had the good fortune to get a scholarship that allowed me to go to college and it changed my life trajectory considerably. And I, I would be remiss, I, I didn't say after I graduated from college, I went back to Washington, D.C. Uh, without a job and uh, one of my friends from Stanford was also there. She had a job and so I said, well, I'll move in with you. and. Uh, I have an aunt is here, my roommate from that time. She took the um, uh, the mattress, I took the box springs, and I got my first job working for Congress and Don Edwards, my predecessor in Congress. And uh, later, um, 
Went to law school while I worked for him. Uh, only applied to one law school, Santa Clara Law School, because it was six blocks from his district office in San Jose. And I did spend a lot of time in local government, 14 years on the Board of Supervisors. And Sam's right, that's an education. You can't hide as you can in a legislative body. Either you get something done or you don't get something done, and everybody can see it. That's the way it needs to be in the legislative branch as well. You know, we have to deliver as Democrats for, in ways that the public needs. And the good news is, although there's been a lot of spinning by the Republicans, we're doing that. We got the CHIPS Act uh, just done last week. We got the Recovery Act done. Uh, right now, the Senate is working on the biggest investment in climate change uh, in many, many decades. And this also will lower health care costs and allow um, it will allow uh, prescriptions to become cheaper. Inflation is a problem worldwide. It's not just the United States, but it's coming down because of the efforts that we're making. You know, I think although ag is the economic engine of this community, people are not that different no matter where they live. They want to have a safe community. They want justice and fairness. They want their kids to get a good education. They want, you know, enough prosperity in their lives to support themselves. They they want um, a f freedom. And I, I actually, the the extremists that now control the Re Republican Party have shown their colors, because when it comes to freedom, they're out to get ours. We had a vote to codify Roe v. Wade uh, on, in the House of Representatives and also to, to protect contraception. And all but three or four Republicans voted against that. The majority lead, the minority leader in the Senate has said that if the Republicans gain control, they fully intend to eliminate Roe v. Wade nationwide. There will no longer be any, any state where that is safe. We know the extremism that the former president uh, incited and nurtured it resulted in January 6th, the riot. And it's been important for me and the other members of that committee to go through piece by piece, pulling every thread, assembling the information. And I'll be honest, it's much worse than I expected when we started. We've shown very clearly that the former president knew exactly what he was doing. He started um, talking about not respecting the vote well before the election was held. Uh, he knew that he lost. He knew that the mob that he called to Washington was armed and directed them to go to the Capitol anyhow. It's very clear from multiple pieces of evidence he intended to go with them, sort of Mussolini-like. We need to make sure that all the information is out and we will finish that this fall so that we can protect ourselves and hopefully wake up those of our fellow Americans who've been snookered by this guy and who don't understand that they have been cheated and lied to and it's to their detriment because whatever we do, and we gotta fix the economy, we know that, and we will. The economy will rebound, inflation will be fought. But if we don't have our democratic republic, if we don't honor our constitution, that will not be enough. So I look forward to representing you uh, in the Congress, and I hope that you'll be with me in this fight. Thank you so very much. Let's hear it for Congresswoman Zoe Lofgren. In a few minutes, Bill Monning will take us home, but we have three last auction items. And so get ready. And the first one is four magnums of Joyce Winery Wines. Uh, these are excellent wines for dinner with your friends, Alberino, uh, brisk and steely Spanish style, uh, vividly fresh. I have bought a bottle already because I didn't want to bid. A Pinot Noir, a Rosé, and a, to be honest, a Mourvedre and Grenache. 
So these four bottles are from the people uh, are where, that are hosting us today. And the value of these four bottles is $300. They're four magnums of Joyce Winery wines. What am I bid for these wines? Who wants to start with $100? 100 right there. 200. Who wants to go to 300? 300 right there. Who wants 400? Anybody want to go to 500? I have a bit of 500 right there. Anybody want to go to 600? 600. You could find somebody and you could go to 600 and they could split it for two of them. So I have a bit of 500. Anybody want to go to 600? I have a bit of 500. She's the new executive director of the food bank, and apparently this is a food group. <laughs> so I have a bit of 500. 500 going once, going twice. Sold to Erica Padilla Chavez. Thank you very much. The next to last item is a three-night beachfront vacation in Cambria. It's a two-bedroom, two-bath furnished home with unobstructed views of the ocean, beach, and lagoon. It steps away from the boardwalk and village. Pets are allowed. The value is $750. Three-night beachfront vacation in Cambria. Who wants to open with $100? <clears> hundred <throat> right there. Is that 200 200 I have a bit of, there's 300 Would you like to go 400 Okay, 500 500 right there. Want to go 600 Delray Oaks to Cambria is a good, okay, there's 600 I have a bit of 600 Anybody want to go 700 S 700 right there. <clears throat> 800 right there. We have a we have a Soledad Delray Oaks bidding war going here. So we have a bid of 800. Anybody want to go 900? 900 right there. Anybody want to go 1,000? We have a bid of 900. Three nights in Cambria. A thousand dollars right there. The legislature is paying very well. Uh, um, is that 1,100 dollars? I have a bid of 1,100. Who wants to go 1,200? I have a bit of 1,100. Three nights in Cambria. Bit of 1,100. 1,100. Is that 1,200? I have a bit of 1,200. Do you want to go 1,300? I have a bit. Oh, I have a bit of 1,300. Very good. 1,300. Would you like to go to 1,400? I have a bit of 1,300. Three nights in Cambria. 1,300. 1300 going once, going twice, sold for $1,300. Thank you very much. <clears throat> and the final item is right here. It is this painting that Amit is lifting. It's a watercolor by renowned Santa Cruz artist John Flores. It's called Before the Fire. It captures the natural beauty of the woods along the central coast. It's watercolor, crayon, ink splash, and ink pen. The value is $650, and the interest of full disclosure, um, that is my spouse of 27 years. So uh, uh, come on, you guys, we got to do this. So for the, fo for the painting before the fire, who'd like to start at $100? I have a hundred. Who wants to go two hundred? Would you like to go three hundred? Three hundred? Four hundred? Five hundred? Six hundred? I have seven hundred. I have a bit of seven hundred. Anybody want to go to eight hundred? I have a bit of seven hundred. Right here. Seven hundred. Seven hundred going once. Going twice. Is that 800? 800. Is that, and I have a 900 in the back. 900. Anybody want to go 1,000? Bit of 900. Would you like to go 1,000? 900. 900 going once. Going twice. Sold for $900. Thank you very much. And I thank you because I can go home and say that was above price. 
And to close us out today, we have someone that for 12 years was an outstanding state legislator from this region, uh, who really, whether it was clean water, worker rights, <clears throat> delivering things for the ocean, just made a fundamental difference in the state legislature. So uh, uh, to talk about the legacy of the Monterey County Democratic Party, please welcome former Senator Bill Mone. Bill? Good afternoon, Democrats. We're on the home stretch here. Please join me in thanking John Laird for being a great MC and auctioneer. John, this is for you. And while we're clapping, let's face toward Pris Walton and thank Pris for initiating this coming together of Peninsula and El Valle de Salinas. Que viva Salinas! Que viva Salinas! Que viven los democráticos! Thank you all. So we're honored today to be joined by so many leaders and activists as we embark on our final push to secure and win critical elections in November. But I also want to start by acknowledging this date, Hiroshima Day, August 6th, when we commemorate the horror of the first use of an atomic weapon on the cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. In the words of the Habakasha, the survivors of the bomb, we must never forget, never again. Chris asked me today if I would close with a brief recap of Democratic leadership in Monterey County. It's hard to do that in summary fashion because we have a very rich history. I do want to start though by acknowledging a very special gift from our fallen friend and compañera Jan Black. We just learned that Jan's estate has announced leaving a thousand dollars to the United Democrats. Let's thank a shout out for Jan Black. Jan was a dear friend. We were colleagues at the Monterey Institute of International Studies, now the Middlebury Institute. Uh, Jan was my alternate for many years on the Democratic Central Committee. But Jan participated not only in our county, but for years she sat on the statewide executive board of the Democrats. And even after Jan's diagnosis with terminal cancer, she continued to attend statewide Democratic Party conventions and meetings. And friends will testify to the fact that late into those nights at those conventions, she was often the last one standing. She would always want to go to one more reception. That was our Jam Black. Join me. I'm going to say Jam Black. We'll follow by saying Presente. Jan Black, Presente. Jan Black, Presente. Jan Black, Presente. And we thank you, Jan, for remembering us. Your legacy lives. I also just want to take a minute to remember our brother, our fallen comrade, Juan Martinez, lifelong resident of Gonzales. Juan worked as an active Democrat all of his adult life. He worked with Willie Brown. He was one of the pioneers of advancing vote by mail around the state of California and flipping seats to Democratic control. But Juan will be remembered here in the Salinas Valley in Monterey County for his leadership in fighting for farm worker rights, for human rights and justice throughout the Salinas Valley. When I drove down 101 today, whenever you see the Bracero Memorial Highway sign, it was Juan Martinez's leadership. So that is a standing memorial to our brother Juan. Please join me as we remember Juan and send him a message. I'll say Juan Martinez, we'll all say Presente. Juan Martinez, Presente. Juan Martinez, Presente. Juan Martinez, Presente. We love you, brother. And finally, another compañera, a leader in the fight for farm worker rights with the UFW and in the community, Sylvia Huerta, 
passed away a few weeks ago. Silvia Huerta was a dynamic force, an immigrant from Mexico, and she embraced the principles of our Constitution and the right of workers to organize. Let's bring Silvia to us. Silvia Huerta, presente! Silvia Huerta, presente! Silvia Huerta, presente! So, friends, as many of you know, some of you perhaps too young to have lived it, Monterey County was a staunchly strong Republican county. The power structure was composed of conservative and in some cases racist and regressive electeds. It was Senator Fred Farr, who many consider to be the father of Monterey County's conversion to a Democratic majority county. Yes, Fred Farr served in the state Senate from 1955 to 1966, and he was one of the first elected officials to recognize the need to protect our region's rich, natural, and human resources. In the congressional district, the Monterey County seat was long held by Republicans. It was Julian Camacho who campaigned as a Democrat for what was then the 16th congressional district seat in 1972. He lost, he campaigned again in 1974, and he lost in the vote, but his contribution laid the groundwork for the victory of Leon Panetta in 1976. So we pay tribute to that legacy of both Julian Camacho and of course Leon Panetta who continues uh, to be one of the um, leaders of Monterey County and national democratic politics. Leon's victory paved the way for a chain of democratic leaders to represent this region in the Assembly, the Senate, and on County Board of Supervisors. For those that I may omit, I apologize in advance, but Monterey County is now rich in the history and legacies created by Sam Farr, who followed his father's lead in politics and served on the Monterey County Board of Supervisors, the California State Assembly, and the U.S. House of Representatives. Henry Mello from Watsonville brought the state Senate seat, which included Monterey County, from Republican to Democrat. And John Laird, who leads us today in the Senate, represented Monterey County in the State Assembly. And we have the leaders who you've heard from today, including Ana Caballero, who not only leads in the Senate today, but was one of the first, the first Latina elected to the City Council in Salinas and the first Latina mayor for the City of Salinas. And I never acknowledge Ana Caballero without also acknowledging our dear friend, her life partner, her husband, Juan Uranga. Where's Juan? Shout out to Juan. Behind every successful woman in politics, well, there's sometimes a man. In this case, there's Juan Uranga. So we acknowledge Juan as well. Um, Jimmy Panetta who we shout out to today. He's working for us out of state. Robert Rivas and Mark Stone are current leaders in the State Assembly. But earlier, leaders and pioneers in the Salinas Valley and Monterey County included Jesse Sanchez, Simon Salinas, Ana Caballero, Fred Keeley, Barbara Shipnook, first woman to the Board of Soups, and just this last week or two weeks ago, the board renamed a building at Natividad Medical Center, the Barber Shipnook Professional Building. Barber Shipnook fought to keep Natividad open as a county hospital when forces tried to shut it down. So we remember Barbara's legacy through that naming up at Natividad. Karen Strasser Kaufman, Sam Karras, Dave Potter, the mayor of Carmel with us today, but also a leader on the Board of Supervisors, Jane Parker, Luis Alejo, Chris Lopez, Mary Adams, Wendy Root Askew, Ana Velasquez, who also hosts us today. Thank you, Ana. John Huerta, Maria Orozco, um, Erica Padilla Chavez, who's with us today, Alejandro Chavez, the Chavez family, the Chavez legacy is strong in this valley. 
We move towards the peninsula. Well, also Maria Orozco, former mayor of Gonzales. Lance McClare, Ralph Rubio, former mayors in Seaside. And with us today, Ian Oglesby, the mayor of Seaside. Yes, shout out for Ian, Mayor Ian Oglesby. Clyde Roberson, Bruce Delgado, and the list goes on. But we've gone from a Republican county 25, 30 years ago to a strongly dominant Democratic county. Now, while these names represent some of those in the Democratic Party, leaders who have represented us in public office, none of this history would have happened without the critical support, organization, and activism of members of our Democratic clubs and the Central Committee, whose individual and collective efforts have indeed achieved the successes that we celebrate today. Monterey County Democrats have always relied on the activism of our local Democratic clubs. Your leadership and coordination with the Central Committee is what makes us all successful. Time to revive that Democratic club in Salinas. Time to start your own if you're in a community without one. The Democratic clubs are the backbone of our Democratic power. I'm wrapping up here, friends, but I also think it's very important to acknowledge our Monterey County Democratic Party power in its ability to reach out to other parts of the state and the nation to support Democrats in tough races. You know, with, you, with computers and cell phones, there's no barrier to our focused participation to win key races. We did it in 2008 when we elected Barack Obama. We did it in 2016 when we elected Hillary Clinton. Remember, she won by three million votes. We did it in the election of Joe Biden, and we won two U.S. Senate seats in Georgia by calling into that state, writing letters into that state. There's nothing that confines us to Monterey County other than let's take care of Monterey County first, and then we'll reach out and help others. And we all know in politics, there's no seat and there's no party majority that is ever guaranteed. We're here today because we care. We walk precincts because we care. We staff phone banks because we care. We make contributions and more contributions because we care. Friends, we say it every time, but the stakes never have been higher. Our nation is at risk. We need to build our party, we need to build our collective strength, and we need to proceed, we need to leave here with absolute confidence that our principles are people principles. Our principles are rooted in human rights for all. Let's crank it up for November and beyond. Thank you, mil gracias y adelante. Let's hear it for Bill Monning. So thanks to all of you for buying a ticket. Thanks for everybody that donated to the auction. Thanks for everybody that bought at the auction. There's more food and drink, and we have a lot to do between now and November, but this has been a great start. Thanks for making this a very successful event.